boy oh boy has it been a while oh man been busy been doing different stuff been lifing but we're gonna try to pump this video out see what happens um, today we're working or I guess this week this video these next couple videos something I don't know we're working on this glycol stuff um, basically what happened you can see uh, somebody somewhere at some point in time this is a glycol loop if you don't know what glycol is it's uh, basically a a secondary substance that's used in refrigeration in order to cool um, and it's like used in the place of refrigerant right so typically what you'll do is you'll use refrigerant to either heat or cool the glycol and then you use that glycol um, <clears throat> basically like I said in place of your refrigerant so what happened on this is somebody put water in this they didn't put glycol um, you can see we're having to patch parts of this line that's right here um, not only that but we're having to patch you can see that unit over there we're having to patch the coils or replace the coils in those units um, that's going to be a different video the thing I'm working on right now or what I'm going to take a look at today is this other we got this rack this is my low temp rack um, this is a secondary system that's using co2 down in the cases right so it's basically subcritical co2 it's got um here let me open it up we've got a dx side and then a secondary side basically what's happening you have compressors you have your suction lines they have a liquid line that's right here right um this is your chilled desuperheating section but basically there's a bunch of uh, flat plate heat exchangers down there that is transferring heat into CO2 um, through those flat plate heat exchangers. Let me open this up. Right, so this is your essentially receiver for the CO2. And what's happening is you're, you're transferring heat and then this CO2 is just pumped. So there's pumps that circulate the CO2 so the pressure's not very high. Um, again, it's just a secondary system. But what's happening, what I'm looking at, what I'm working on is on this condenser. Um, so basically, if you look, you have two lines coming off. So that's your liquid line, right? So you have your condenser, you have your drop leg coming down, and then that goes into, or sorry, your drop legs right here, going into your receiver, coming out, right and then that's going into your liquid line well you notice there's a ball valve right here on this liquid line right so if you turn this ball valve off what's going to happen is your liquid is going to go through this pipe right into the inlet here and what's on the other side of this come on baby is just a pump it's just a pump i've never seen a side uh, setup like this before uh, but basically your inlet comes in goes through your pump comes back out and then connects back to your liquid line which then goes up into the rack and feeds your dx part of the system um, never seen a setup like this before honestly not really sure what it does um, so if anybody any of you big brains out there know but also i think it might be used to increase pressure because I'm in a land right now where it gets it gets mighty cold. It's been decent since I've been up here, but um, I think that it might be something for low ambient, where once the temperature of the ambient gets low and you're losing uh, your head pressure, it goes through that pump in order to keep velocity up. I don't know, I don't really know though. So if anybody knows, drop it down in the comments. But basically what I'm gonna do is this is all set up. Um, I basically, I went and looked at one this morning I took a bunch of pictures of the programming. I kind of saw how it was operating. Um, and I'm basically just gonna turn this one on. You can see right now it's ball valved off. So I don't know if there's any pressure on there yet. I'm gonna check that. We got this uh, CDS valve or this stepper valve that again, I'm not real sure what it does, but something that's connected to the discharge line comes down to your outlet 
down there, this outlet pipe that's labeled outlet. Um, but basically I'm gonna turn it on, see if it's got the programming in it, watch it run, and make sure there's no issues with it. Okay, so I've got these lines purged out. So basically I just opened that ball valve right there. That's the inlet. I got these lines purged out. Basically I just opened that ball valve right there, right? That's my inlet, goes through that pump, comes back out, comes back to my liquid line, right? So I open that ball valve, let it purge out right here, and then open that ball valve. Now, I still have this ball valve open. I think I'm gonna close it, see what happens. I should maintain pressure, I think. Worst case scenario, this line just kind of pumps down and I reopen that, that split valve. But I think it should be running through this pump now let's see is there let's see there's a transducer right there right there i think it's just moving through it at this point i'm not 100 percent sure honestly um liquid pressure is dropping a little bit but i think what i'm gonna do is kick this thing on start it up fucking see what happens so Let's see, let me put this stuff away real quick. Those caps are for there, that's fine. I mean, my liquid pressure is still maintaining, so I think it's still moving through the pump. I know I have power. I don't know if I have power at this disconnect. Let me check power at this disconnect. I checked the other one I had power, but I haven't checked this one. So let me see. And from my understanding, this one's never been turned on. But you're still maintaining liquid pressure. Oh, those fans started speeding up. I was like, why the heck is it making this noise? Let's see. Checking here. I got nothing. 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 Okay, so there's no power on this. So if I come to here. That says distribution panel, 8, 10, 12, that's for rack A. This liquid pressure still maintaining, so I think it's just flowing through. Either that or it's, no, I think it's flowing through. So I got that ball valve turned off. Um, let's see, we follow that conduit right there. Comes inside the rack. Got to get to it from the outside. All right. All right, eight, ten, twelve, right there. So let's kick that on. And let's check to make sure that we have power over here now. Liquid pressure is still the same. All right, got it on there. 210. 210. Come on, baby, get on there. All right, so we're good there. Let's fucking kick that piece on and we got lights okay so you can see here we've got this Corel drive we've got like a Kelvin uh, pressure control do you want to use the start up assistance probably I'd assume this thing would already be uh, programmed but I guess not um, yeah I'm gonna have to go through this thing and just check all the programming essentially. Let me see, let me make sure I got good power here. 208, 208, 208, okay. So, I gotta go through all of this stuff. Um, I got a bunch of pictures I gotta look at on my phone. So let me do all that and then I'll um, get back to this. 
I just went through all of this stuff, right? I went through this Corel controller, uh, commissioned this drive basically, uh, went through this Kelvin. Um, I took a bunch of pictures of the unit I was at, at a different store and just took a pictures of all the programming. It looks like basically this thing came pre-programmed. Uh, we just had, I guess you just basically just got to turn it on. You know, probably the biggest thing that we did was install this skid, do the piping, but it looks like everything came um, pre-programmed. So I just went through, verified all of that. And um, yeah, like I said, I think this is a low ambient control. So that way when it gets super cold out, because it does get super cold where I'm at right now, um, I think it's like a booster pump, I think. If anybody else has any other ideas, fucking let me know. Okay, so you can see I've got this drive. I've got it on hand. So basically I'm forcing it to 60 hertz, 100%, pulling seven amps, right? 7.6, 7.6. Um, and what happened was now my outlet pressure is at 300, almost 300 pounds, right? Um, and my inlet pressure, let me put a gauge on that real quick just so I can check that. Okay, so you can see my inlet pressure is still at that 150. My outlet pressure was at 300. So that's um, that's pretty much confirming to me that this thing's basically like a booster pump. So um, let me put this back in auto. I'm sure it will stop calling for 100%. Maybe. I might have to go through the parameters on this thing again. Let me turn it off for now. And then auto. See what happens. So it's calling for 60 hertz. Let me see. If I go back into hand and I turn this thing all the way down, let's see what happens. I'm at zero hertz on hand, go to auto, still calling for 60 hertz, which I don't think is correct. So I'm gonna have to go back through this programming and see um, see what I missed. Okay, so just a quick recap on that video. Uh, so I was working on basically a booster pump. Um, what it's actually called is a liquid pressure amplification control. Okay, um, basically what that, what I, I had to do a bunch of reading. Um, I did some stuff that I didn't capture on camera. Um, the reason why at the end that drive was ramping to 100%, even though I didn't think that it should, was because there was two transducers that weren't reading, um, which was making that drive ramp. But so it's basically a booster pump, right? It's a low, it's another type of low ambient control. Um, and so what it's doing is once that discharge pressure drops, it's the set point's actually for 105 pounds. So once that discharge pressure, that liquid pressure drops to 105 pounds, uh, that drive starts ramping that pump and just maintains a liquid pressure, right? I'm assuming it's because where I'm at right now, it's cold. I'm in like the Northern states of America. Um, it's been pretty cold. Today was decent, it's 40 degrees. You know, um, that's the warmest it's been since we've been here. So I can only assume once we get into like January, February, it probably gets super cold. Um, but that was pretty much it. So just kind of, uh, just wanted to do a quick recap clarification over what that was. I was pretty confused on what it was until I started, you know, doing what I was supposed to do and actually read about it first. Um, but yeah, so that's it. Like I said, just wanted to do a quick recap pretty simple basically just had to turn it on programming was already there just had to get those transducers to read right and yeah that was pretty much it so my apologies for the uh long gap in videos i've been super busy with a new company uh you know a bunch of life stuff going on but i'm gonna start trying to pump them out again and start trying to do the lives again so we'll see how that goes but till then Appreciate everybody's support. Make sure y'all like, subscribe, do the thing, you know, do what everybody tells you, but I do appreciate it. So again, thank you. Later.